Welcome everyone to another edition of Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. Today we're continuing with our DOF Reality H6 Builder Series. This is part four and we're going to talk about the peripherals today. Now, just as a quick recap to anyone that's catching this series in the middle, in part one, we went over a motion platform and what it is and how it works, all the basics. In part two, I talked about the value of the DOF H6 and why I chose it over the other motion simulator platforms on the market. In part three, we talked about the core build of the unit, including the framework and the motors and everything that really makes the motion platform work. And today, we're talking about the peripherals which are the input devices that you'll use as a user to either fly in your jet plane or race a car. So steering wheels and joysticks and that sort of thing. So I want to make a quick note. Everything that I'm going to talk about here today, I paid for uh, full price. Nothing was given to me. And all of the products that we're going to go, be going over are going to be in affiliate links in the description below. So if you're interested in any of these things, feel free to check them out in the description. And as affiliate links, any purchase you make with them actually does help out the channel and shouldn't cost you anything more than if you just went to Amazon straight away. So the first thing I think I want to talk about is when you decide to buy a motion simulator and you get into one of these, you have to make a decision as to what the purpose of it is for you. So are you going to want to do racing games and flight simulator games like I have here? So I've got both a steering wheel and a joystick to fly. Are you just going to do flying? In which case you probably don't need this whole front piece here that has a steering wheel. You can probably keep that open so it's a little easier to get in and out of the unit. And then you can even do a center stick uh, for flight because you won't have this in the way to get in and out. So um, if you're just going to focus on racing, then you don't need the joystick and all that stuff. So you really want to figure out what the motion platform is going to be used for you to get your most out of it. So once you determine that, then you start figuring out how you're going to mount everything and what uh, peripherals are most important to you. So I'm going to share with you what I came up with and the things that I found were best to fit my needs for the motion platform. So let's start off by doing a panning view to show you all the peripherals that we actually have on the DOF Reality H6. And we'll start our discussion over here on the right side. And everything starts with this powered hub that's right here. So this is a Sabrent uh, USB powered hub. And I can actually access that from sitting in the simulator. So it actually has all my on-off buttons for each peripheral plugged in. And all the peripherals come into this. Now I also have a USB hub that's unpowered and that sits right under this little block right in here um, and that's simply for the mouse pad and for the joystick itself so those two items plug into the USB hub that's sitting under here and then that in turn plugs into this powered hub which everything else hooks to and then this goes directly to the computer so that's really convenient because like I said I can be sitting in the unit and get to that very easily so now let's talk really quick about this mouse pad I don't see a lot of these on uh, motion simulators. Most people use a trackball or something. What I don't like about a trackball is it will actually move as the simulator moves. This is a basically a touchpad similar to what you'd find on a laptop. And it works so well for the motion simulator because there's no moving parts. And basically you've got your you know left and right buttons. And you can also scroll. So if you use two fingers, you can scroll up and down. And when you're in a simulator like DCS, it actually adds to the immersion because when you actually click, it actually kind of feels like you're clicking buttons in the cockpit. So works really well. Uh, very happy with that. And I was a little worried when I bought it. This is the large version. I was worried that I was going to, you know, constantly be hitting the edges and not be able to scroll where I want. This model right here is perfect. I never have that problem. So this is an ideal interface for a mouse on a motion platform. So let's move up here now to the Warthog. And the Warthog is basically one of the premier flight sticks out there and this warthog basically um, what we did for it is we actually rotated this cord was typically coming out of the front here and so we carefully repositioned it to come out the back so we didn't have to worry about bumping into it all the time getting in and out of the simulator so if you're careful you can do that so let's real quickly come to the underside of this Thrustmaster Warthog. And the nice thing about both the Warthog and the uh, Logitech G27 steering wheel is that they have a base that already has a pre-threaded 
uh, holes. So all you have to do to mount this is you just basically screw the peripheral right to the base plate. Super easy, super convenient. And if we come over to the uh, Logitech G27, you can see we've got the same thing here with the mounting holes. So that makes it super easy and super convenient to mount your peripherals when they already have those pre-drilled and threaded holes in the bottom of the base. So what happens if you buy a peripheral that doesn't have the threaded inserts already built into it like the Logitech G27 or the uh, Thrustmaster Warthog have? Well, you can always Velcro it to the base plates, but we came up with a better solution. That's where these things come in. These are called rivet nuts, and these are aluminum rivet nuts. It's an assortment of them. And basically what these allow you to do is you drill a hole into the base of your peripheral, whatever the plastic or metal, whatever it is, and then these actually will uh, press into that hole that you just made, and you squeeze them down slightly, and it basically gives you a threaded insert just like you found on those other peripherals. And then you can hard mount everything to the base plates just like you did with the Warthog and the G27. So these are a fantastic item and uh, we use these on pretty much everything except for the steering wheel and the joystick. So highly useful, highly recommend these. Now I will tell you, it's a little disheartening when you tear into your brand new $170 keyboard or your you know $300 throttle or whatever and start drilling holes in these brand new items just to put these rivet nuts in. But in the end, it all worked out. Everything went back together fine and very happy with the final result. Now there's one more item on this right panel that we're really proud about and that's this emergency stop button. Now when we first bought the H6, we purchased the emergency stop button from DOF and it's fine. It works great, but it was a little big for what we were looking for. We couldn't really slide it in there where we wanted it. So we actually went online and found this amazing machined emergency stop button that's a little smaller but it mounted in here perfectly. Now we painted it to match the rest of the unit. It comes in like a silver gray type uh, setup, but very happy with it. It has worked perfectly and uh, it was a nice additional touch to just the refinement of the overall motion platform. So one other thing that we purchased off of Amazon that was really helpful is this assorted set of M6 bolts. The peripherals all seem to use an M6 thread. So we purchased this. It was uh, basically a bunch of bolts that had various sizes in the M6 thread style and that way we had a bolt for any application we needed for mounting the peripherals. So now let's move over to the center section of the H6 and show you some of the key peripherals that we have here. So we'll start off by talking about the Logitech G27 steering wheel. Um, the reason I chose this steering wheel is primarily due to the weight. So a lot of people have commented that this isn't a real simulator because it's not using a direct drive wheel and all that sort of thing. Well, here's the problem with a direct drive wheel. A direct drive wheel is about two to three times as heavy as this G27. So when you're in a full motion platform, you have to be really considerate of the weight and the balance of the unit. Otherwise you'll overheat the motors. Uh, that drive the motion. So you've got to be careful with that. And I also really like the feel of this wheel. I like the feel of the leather. I like the fact that these buttons are really easy to get to when you're in VR. They're very blatantly obvious which button is which. And I like the feel of the metal shifter. So for me, the Logitech G27 is a perfect fit for my motion platform. Now, other people that want to try the direct drive, that's fine. Just be very careful that you don't overheat your motors and have a problem there. So that's the reason for the G27 and I'm very happy with it. Um, let's move over to probably one of the most unique features and this really makes my motion platform stand out and it's this Kinesis Freestyle Pro keyboard and it's a split keyboard. As you can see it basically uh, is half on the left and half on the right. And the funny thing is I actually probably spent just about as much money on keycaps as you can see here, I've got textured keycaps for my ASWD keys. I've got rounded keycaps here. And that's all to give you a tactile feedback or tactile feel when you're in VR because when you're in VR, you can't see the keyboard. So you need these keys. I've got some slick ones right here. Um, you need those keys to kind of stand out by touch so you can get to them. And I was a little worried. So 
you can see that the keyboard is kind of mounted sideways and I was worried it was going to really kind of be weird to type like that, but it's really not a problem at all. So I'm very happy with this. Again, this is the Kinesis Freestyle Pro and it fits so well on these angles. And what we did to mount this is we had actually found little um, aluminum shelving units and they were the perfect size. And all we did was mount them here, um, bolt those to the actual H6 unit. And that really gave us a really nice platform. Um, you can see right here, that's part of the shelf right there. And it gave us a really nice platform to mount the keyboards to. So that's how we mounted those. And then the actual mounting of the keyboard themselves, we actually took them apart. And we actually used countersunk screws in these to give us the ability to mount them to the shelving itself. So um, it was a little bit of a process. And again, it was a little nerve wracking taking this $170 keyboard that was brand new apart. But uh, yeah, it mounted really well. And at the end of the day, it gives us full functionality of a keyboard. And I think it looks really good as well and mounts really nicely to the unit and fills out the whole look. So very happy with that. So let's go ahead and move on to the coolest feature of the motion platform, pun intended. Um, these are the Sim Racing Studios win kits and i think these are an older model if you go to the site now and again the uh, links are in the description below the new models are actually made out of aluminum housing so these are 3d printed um, their new versions which i believe are called the hurricane are actually an even an upgrade from this and these are more than just a little fan that keeps me cool when i'm doing my vr sessions these are actually connected to the sim racing studios telemetry software and these actually will speed up as you're racing. So if you're in a car, the faster you go, the more these blow air. And the other cool thing is they have what's called wind curbing, which allows basically the fans to kind of give you a stereo effect where when you're in a turn and where the body of the car would typically be blocking the wind, it would actually lower the wind on one side and uh, more on the other side, kind of a stereo effect to give you that feel of the wind coming from a different direction. So that's a really cool feature as well. Um, really like these. They add a lot to the immersion. And again, we're always about the immersion on this channel. And the way we have these mounted, what we noticed a lot of times when we were watching other people with these, the fans themselves were bouncing all over the place as the motion simulator was moving. So we didn't want to have that happen. So what we did is we actually custom built a bracket and you can see it here and I'll show you another picture. Um, and the bracket is connected to these Scotty uh, mounts. Now these mounts are typically used by fishermen uh, to mount their fish finders and stuff in their boats. So they're really solid. They're designed to hold um, a lot of weight and actually stay put when you get a lot of motion. So we found that was the best solution for mounting these kind of things. And these things, these fans have been on here for a year now and there hasn't been any problem. Um, they stay put, they move with the platform, but they don't get any excess movement out of them because we're using those Scotty mounts. So taking a look at the front of the SRS wind kit, you can see here, we also customized the grill. We actually got these Silverstone uh, grills. We thought they matched the basic look of the uh, Logitech G27 better. So just that was strictly an appearance part. We added that and then Again, you can see our Scotty mount and the bracket that we custom built to keep these all in place. Again, all that stuff will be in the description if you're interested. But that is the Sim Racing Studios uh, wind kit. And uh, definitely recommend it to anyone that wants to add that little bit extra piece of immersion. So now we come to the pedal solution that I chose for the H6. And again, as I mentioned before, I built this more to focus on the flight sim aspects than the, rather than the racing aspects. And so that's why I chose the CH Products Pro pedals. They give me my rudder and they also have toe brakes. But the big thing that I liked about these was because I do also do racing, it's the ability to use these little pedal chocks and basically you can put those in here and then you slide another one over in this and pop it down. And now that takes all of that rudder slide out and you can use them as racing pedals. So you've got, you know, your gas and your brake and it's not as good as a dedicated racing pedal set, but again, it gets the job done and it feels pretty good. And for being able to convert from racing to back to flight in a matter of two or three seconds, 
that convenience is worth it to me. So that's the reason for this pedal choice. Um, again, this did not have any kind of threaded holes in it. So we did have to also drill holes in this and use it basically with the rivet nuts. But it's solid and it's worked for almost a year now. So highly recommend it and it works good for me. Now one other option that you do have, you can order a second base plate for your pedals. So you could actually have uh, racing pedals mounted to one plate and then your rudder pedals to another. And then when you wanted to switch from racing to sim, to flight sim, you would simply change that base plate out. I don't want to go to all that trouble. So for me, this is a better solution. So now let's move over to the left side of the motion simulator and let's talk a little bit about this Cooltron numeric keypad that is a custom mechanical keypad. Um, basically emulates your cursor keys and the numeric keypad that you'd find on a regular keyboard. And again, you can see we've got a bunch of custom keycaps that we've added to it. And uh, the reason I wanted this is I do a lot with like my engine start stuff. I use these buttons for that and in uh, Elite Dangerous cycling through my menus. So I actually use my numeric keypad and specifically these cursors quite a bit. So this is a custom piece. Uh, I've got the actual unit that we purchased in the description below, but we added this. We actually cut apart an old keyboard and we took some of the plastic out and pulled some of these switches out of here, added this cap piece. And so this is not something you can actually buy like this, but you can get this and customize it to fit your needs. And if you look at the front of our numeric keypad that we have out here, you can see we also used one of these Scotty mounts for this as well. And that allows you to really position that wherever you want. This has a lot of flexibility with the two ball joints and you can basically position tilt however you want to fit it in there so that it's easy to get to and feels comfortable when you use it. And let's talk a little bit about the throttle solution that I chose. Now this is the CH Products Pro Throttle and I actually have owned this for quite a while. Um, when I first purchased this throttle, it was basically one of the few sliding throttles on the market. And I prefer that to the arcing throttle, like what the Warthog has. And that's simply because I like to keep these buttons orientated properly. And on an arcing throttle, sometimes what feels like up, sometimes when you push the throttle forward, up feels more like forward and all that. So by using this uh, throttle. It basically keeps all my buttons orientated. And then the other thing I really like is this right here. This is an analog thumbstick. And I use this a lot in my uh, space sims like Elite Dangerous. I use this to like strafe up, strafe down, that kind of thing. So that's where this comes into play. And I uh, really like this throttle. Now we mounted this throttle uh, similarly with the rivet nuts. So we had to basically take it apart, add the rivet nuts, and then mounted it to this base here. And uh, I'll show you that here. The other thing about this throttle that was a little interesting, this throttle had no resistance um, out of the factory. It wasn't really built back when they had motion platforms. So we actually had to add some little rubber feet inside of it to give it a little resistance so that when you're flying and the motion uh, platform moves, this doesn't start sliding back and forth. And it works really good now. It's got just enough resistance to keep it in place while the platform moves. So that's basically the CH Products Pro Throttle. Now I totally understand how there are a lot of people that probably don't want to spend $500 on a Thrustmaster Warthog system made out of metal with all the bells and whistles. Um, so we kind of looked at an alternative for some of you that might be looking for a more value option. And this right here is the Thrustmaster 1600. And this is about $150, $160, somewhere like that. And it actually has a lot going for it for that price. So the nice thing is it's got the sliding throttle. And then it has this little toggle up front here that you can see that's actually an axis. So you could actually use that for your rudder pedals if you wanted to. Um, the stick also has the ability to swivel. So you can use that as an axis. It has the inserts in the bottom, so it does have threaded inserts, so it will bolt to your uh, plates. Another neat feature, this throttle will actually, you can adjust the tension on it, so you always need a little bit of tension when, you're, when you have the throttle, otherwise as the motion platform moves, that thing's just going to flop around. So this little system here is a pretty comprehensive system uh, if you're looking for something that's more value oriented. At the end of the day, you're going to have to find something that you think is going to meet your needs, but at least this might give you something to look at and think about.
And finally, let's take a little trip down below the sim itself and show you a peripheral that I purchased that I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend the money on at the time, but I am so glad I did. This is the Butt Kicker Gamer 2. And basically what this is, is a tactile transducer. And think of it as like a subwoofer that doesn't really put out any sound. It takes the noise from the game and actually converts it into vibrations and then sends that through the whole chassis. You can fill it in the seat when you're playing. Now the way it works is it basically plugs into this amplifier which plugs directly into the computer uh, sound output and this all comes as one kit, as one unit, you don't buy these separately and then you also have this lovely remote control that I have mounted basically with velcro to the corner of the seat that allows me to turn it on and off and adjust the volume so that I can get the exact amount of vibration and feedback that I'm looking for. So this Gamer 2 is a really nice addition and again just adds to the immersion of the overall experience. Really happy with it, really glad I added it and uh, would recommend it to anyone who's looking for a little bit more immersion out of their gaming experiences. And the cool thing is you don't have to mount this to a motion platform. You can actually just mount this to an office chair and still get that tactile feedback. And it's a pretty cool deal. So um, if you're thinking about this, it's not a bad choice. So that should just about wrap it up for part four of the DOF Reality H6 Builder Series. I hope you found it both informative and entertaining. And just as a reminder, uh, please hit that like and subscribe button below if you like our content and want to see more of it. And also, I've started a new Twitter handle. It's at Gygo News, so at G-Y-G-O News. And if you'll go over to Twitter and follow us there, I'd appreciate it. That just gives me a channel to reach out to you guys with really quick little news snippets or upcoming events without having to do a whole YouTube video on it. So do me a favor and go over there and sign up and follow us there, and I'd really appreciate it. So until next time... Remember to stay safe out there and remember to get your game on.